Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the gradient of a scalar, or in particular, the gradient of a scalar field, which may be a better way to say it. Now the gradient is the same or analogous to a derivative. So when we talk about taking the gradient of a, of a scalar field, it's like taking the derivative of that field, but it has a specific meaning. It's more than just taking the derivative of that field. The gradient of a scalar field is a vector in itself. So when we take the gradient, we end up with a vector, and that vector will represent something. It will represent the magnitude and direction, of course. A vector has always a magnitude and direction, but a vector obtained by taking the gradient of a scalar field will give us the magnitude and direction of the maximum change, and in particular, the maximum increase of the scalar field at any point within that field. So we're looking for the place we're looking for a particular place in the field and we want to know what the maximum change is in the direction of that maximum change. So I, what direction should I go to have a maximum change in that scalar field? Now you may say, well, wait a minute, I really don't know what a scalar field is. And that makes sense. Not a lot of us do know what that is. But for example, let's say we want to represent the temperature in a room. So it is a three-dimensional scale. It has an x, a y, and a z coordinate. And when we go in different places in the room, the temperature may be different. So the temperature in itself is a scalar quantity, and it's within a field, a volume size field. And so we can represent the temperature as whatever it may be somewhere in the room at the coordinates x, y, and z. So a representation of temperature in a room is a representation of a scalar field. Or, for example, if we have a topographic map, and on the map that has an x and a y dimension, there is elevation associated with that. So when we're in a particular x and y coordinate, we have a particular elevation. That elevation, again, is a scalar quantity. So you can think of this as maybe a topographic map here in a graphical sense, where we represent u as has a scalar value. And notice these lines here represent constant values of that, of that scalar field. Along this line, the field has a magnitude of 0. Along this line, the field has a magnitude of 4. Along this line, it has a magnitude of 8. So this is a two-dimensional representation of a scalar field. If I want to know what the maximum change is at this particular location and the direction of that, I can represent that by a vector quantity, which is defined by the gradient of that scalar field. And this is the symbol we use for that. So the gradient of the field is a vector quantity, and that will then represent the, the magnitude and direction. Here's the direction and the magnitude of the maximum change or the maximum increase in the field. You can imagine when you keep going out that the field would continue to increase as is indicated by this, this graph. Also notice that this is the unit vector in that direction. The unit vector can be obtained by taking the vector itself, which is the gradient of the scalar field, and divided by the magnitude of that. Now, mathematically, the del operator, which is like an upside down triangle here, is representative of what we're going to do here, take the gradient. So when we take this quantity right here, notice we have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate. We have the unit vector in the three dimensions, x, y, and z, and multiply that times the partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z. That's where the analogy comes in, where it's like a derivative. We're going to take the derivative of this scalar quantity in the x, the y, and the z with respect to the x, the y, and the z direction, and then we're going to multiply that times the unit vectors in those three directions. So here, we're going to take the gradient of u, we take the del operator and multiply it times u. So here you see we take the parcel of u with respect to x, the parcel of u with respect to y, and the parcel of u with respect to z, and multiply that accordingly to the x, the y, and the z unit vectors. As an example, let's say here that u is equal to y squared minus x. Notice this is a scalar quantity. There's no direction involved. We're going to take the gradient of u. Well, the gradient of u is going to be equal to the x unit vector times the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Now, the partial derivative of y squared with respect to x is, of course, 0 because there's no x in there. And the partial derivative of minus x is a minus 1. So this becomes minus 1 plus the y unit vector times the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Now in that case, the derivative of this with respect to y is 2y, 
and the derivative of minus x with respect to y is 0. So this is simply 2y times the unit vector in the y direction. Finally, plus z. And we're going to multiply that times the partial derivative of u with respect to z. But since there's no z's in the, in the function here, in the u function, the, the uh, scalar function of u, then, of course, the partial derivative with respect to z has to be 0. So we can then finally say that the gradient of u is going to be equal to minus 1 unit in the x direction plus 2y in the y direction. And that's how we take the gradient. Notice we now end up with a vector. That vector does have a direction, and that vector now does have a magnitude, which, by the way, depends on the value where it's at. As the y changes on this function, you can see that the gradient changes as well. So that means that the direction and the magnitude will change as a function of y in this particular case. Also notice that the gradient is always going to be perpendicular to the line or surface that represents the constant u. That makes a lot of sense. Let's say that you're on this location right here and you want to find the direction of maximum change. Well, the maximum change would be towards this direction right here. You can see that if you go at the shortest path, which means perpendicular to this line, you'll get to the u equals 8 much quicker. If you take a pad in a different direction that's not perpendicular, notice that it takes longer to get there. That's not the fastest path to get to a different value, to a larger value. And so that makes sense then that the, that the gradient would always be perpendicular to the surface, which means that if you want to find the gradient at this location, the direction will be like this. If you want to find the gradient at this location, the direction will be like this. So the direction will always be perpendicular to the line or the surface that represents the constant value of the scalar function. That should be a good overview of the gradient of a scalar. Here you can see mathematically what the del operator looks like. Here you can see what it looks like when you take the gradient in a mathematical sense. And here you have an example of how to actually take the gradient of a scalar function. There you have a physical representation, a graphical representation that shows that the gradient is always perpendicular to the surface. The magnitude can be defined by taking the derivative or the gradient of the scalar quantity. And then if you want to find the direction, the unit vector in the direction, you take the gradient of the, of the scalar quantity and divide it by the magnitude as well to find the direction perpendicular to the surface or to the line that represents a constant value. And that's what we mean by the gradient of a scalar quantity.